Are EVs really less expensive to operate than gasoline vehicles? I'm sure you've all heard the debates. EVs are less expensive. No, regular car is less expensive. Let's unpack the info. And let me start by saying you should always do your own math. Do your own math. Check out your own situation. Not everybody commutes the same distance every day. Not everybody has the same need. Not everybody's shopping for the same kind of vehicle. Let me just say that I started recording this video because I watched something and then followed up by reading some of the articles. And I'm not going to mention it, but I will just say that their math was not only way off, but apples to oranges comparisons were being used. And that is the biggest bugaboo of mine is please, 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 if you're going to make a comparison, do an apples to apples comparison. In this particular video and written article, the author started by comparing a $35,000 gasoline vehicle to a $55,000 EV and then was shocked that the insurance costs were higher. No sh Sherlock, you have an expensive car, the insurance costs are going to be higher. Then the author completely forgets that somehow their federal tax credits, additional state and local incentives, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all trying to expose somehow that an electric car is going to be more expensive to operate than a gasoline vehicle. So let's just rework this with actual data and apples to apples comparisons here. There is a reason that the best selling EVs in America are 55 to $60,000 approximately as far as their starting price range. They're generally purchased by middle income Americans, single family homeowners, often dual income families families, etc., and also very often multi-car households. That's just the way the demographics work. That's not the only demographic that buys an EV, quite obviously, and there are certainly EVs out there that are targeting the Nissan Sentra shopper or a RAV4 shopper, but that's not the vehicle that this person was using. So let's try and put this in appropriate context. If you're shopping for a Tesla Model Y and you can afford a $58,990 base Model Y, you're probably not looking at a Nissan Sentra as an alternative. You're probably shopping for something like a BMW X3 M440i, which magically is about the same price. $57,880. Now, by the time you've comparably equipped the BMW to the Tesla, it's going to be about $60,445, as close as you can possibly configure them. I will put that big disclaimer there because there are going to be features you'll find on the BMW that you won't find on the Tesla and vice versa, of course. But generally speaking, these two vehicles are much more comparable and much more rational. They're the same kind of vehicle. They're both luxury crossovers. They're both in about the same price range. If you go out and look for financing and you can afford one, logically you could afford the other. Further putting these two EVs on level ground is the fact that the Tesla no longer has a federal tax credit at all. That was based on a certain number of units. Tesla sold more than that, so the tax credit is gone. Depending on where you live in the U.S., however, there may be additional state and local incentives. Even in Texas, there are a reasonable number of state and local incentives. The state has an EV rebate program. It is limited to 2,000 units a year, but it still exists. And Texas utilities will give you rebates and other discounts if you buy an EV. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to call that column zero here. On the EV side, you are going to have to install a charger. I know people can live without them. I personally would not do that. I would install a charger. Now, according to Home Advisor, the average national cost for installing an EVSE is $800. Not a big deal. And that means that the Tesla is still not as expensive as the BMW. So that one's done. Now let's move on to fueling costs. According to the Energy Information Administration, as of the date that I'm shooting this video, February 2022, the national average for electricity cost is 14 cents per kilowatt hour. Gasoline, $3.50. But the BMW loves premium, and most folks are probably going to follow that recommendation. So that's $4 a gallon. Over a 15,000 mile year, that's $2,600 in average fuel costs, assuming you get the EPA number there, and about $550 for the electric vehicle. But being generous to the gasoline car, I'll call the EV $800 a year because DC fast charging can be a little expensive. It can set you back to say $9 to $10 a charge, depending on how long you spend there and how much energy you use. And of course, some folks are going to charge more, some folks are going to charge less. Let's just call that $800 here. Now, insurance, that did surprise me here because I actually believed a lot of the reports that an EV may be a little bit more expensive to insure than a gasoline vehicle. So I rang up my insurance company. They happen to be USAA. And here's what they told me. A Model Y would add $1,592 to my insurance costs where I am in California yearly. BMW, $1,618 actually managed to be ever so slightly more expensive. To be honest, however, that's basically a wash. 
At this point, I will go back to saying apples to apples comparisons are essential because why is it that you see reports of insurance costs being so much higher for a Tesla Model Y than the average gasoline car? Because they're comparing the wrong vehicle to the wrong vehicle. A Tesla Model Y, sure, it's going to be more expensive to insure than a Prius, but a BMW is also more expensive to insure than a Prius. So why would you be comparing things that are not the same price? If you want the EV equivalent to a Nissan Sentra, that exists. It's a Nissan Leaf. And guess what? A Nissan Leaf is about as expensive to insure as a gasoline vehicle that's about the same price as a Nissan Leaf. Mind blowing, I know. Now let's go on to maintenance costs. And here I will have to say that my gold standard has always been Edmunds.com's true cost to own. Unfortunately, Edmunds does not have information on the Model Y's true cost to own. So I had to go to another source, CarEdge.com. I prefer data from agnostic sources, car sources that are not pushing EVs, that are not pushing gasoline vehicles or any other particular technology. I just want to see the data and then try and figure things out myself. Car Edge puts the BMW at $4,569 for outside of warranty repair and ongoing maintenance costs. That's anything that is not included in the vehicle, tires, things like that, uh, anything that might go wrong, the cost of that on average. At this point, I'm going to put an asterisk next to that number because I think that number seems a little bit high, but Edmunds actually says it's a little low. So if you go by Edmunds total cost of ownership, again, not available on the Model Y, they put the BMW a little bit higher. So we'll just go with that number. Now, according to Car Edge, the Tesla Model Y comes in at $1,449. I find that number conversely just a little bit low. So I'm willing to just, for the sake of argument here to make everybody happy, let's just call that $2,000. Next, let's tackle depreciation. To be perfectly honest, in 2022, this is a crapshoot because it doesn't seem like anything is depreciating really that much. But according to the data that I have from Car Edge and ALG and a number of other sources, it looks like you should expect about 49% depreciation on the Tesla, about 53% on the BMW. Relatively close. Of course, this is really going to depend on exactly how much you paid for the X3. If you pay MSRP versus getting some sort of discount on the X3, that's going to affect your true depreciation. But let's just go with these numbers here. So that means that when you sell your BMW, you'll get $28,409 back. That's the number on this chart here. And when you sell your Tesla, you'll end up with $30,084 back. What's the total after five years and 75,000 miles, excluding financing, which should be more or less similar? You'll end up at a total cost of $57,695 for owning and operating the BMW and then getting rid of it. On the Tesla side, $43,666. That's about $14,000 less on the Tesla side. Now, again, some of these numbers could be a little bit off, but we're talking apples to apples here. So say you decide to DC fast charge your Tesla all the time. You're not going to consume $14,000 worth of DC fast charging. Say you run through your tires all the time because on the Tesla, you can go really fast <laughs> zero to 60 and the tires may wear a little bit quicker on the Tesla than on the X3 because of its added curb weight. You're still not going to consume $14,000 of tires unless you're doing something really wrong. Wrong. And the corollary there would be if you were doing that same thing in an X3, you'd be burning through tires pretty quickly as well. Likewise, if you're a bad driver and your insurance costs are higher, they're going to be higher across the board. They shouldn't be particularly higher on one side or the other. This is usually the point in the exercise where EV detractors will say, of course, but what about the battery pack cost? Well, what about that? Remember that the Tesla has an eight year, 120,000 mile warranty on the battery. Your range will likely decrease over the five years and 75,000 miles of driving. But the fact of the matter is the average American doesn't really keep their car long enough for that original purchaser to worry about the battery. And I hate to say that this is someone else's problem, but Truthfully, in this exercise, when you're talking to someone about their vehicle being more expensive to them, then it is external to this exercise, to be perfectly honest. Now, a new battery in a Tesla Model Y would be about $22,000 or so. That's the price quotes we've seen from people that have had to have strange battery replacements out of warranty in their Model Y. But you'll notice that if it's covered under eight years, we're talking about what happens after year nine and all of these other expenses start accelerating on the BMW X3. So it is entirely likely that once you get out of the warranty period in the Model Y, even if you had to replace its battery, it may actually still be a little bit less expensive. 
As I said at the beginning of the video, please do your own math. And I would love to see that down there in the comment section. If you've recently purchased an EV or if you're planning on buying an EV, let me know about your situation because not everybody is interested in the Model Y performance or Model Y long range. Some people might be shopping for a Nissan Leaf and they might be comparing that to a Toyota Camry or a Honda Accord or a Nissan Sentra or something like that. Obviously, the math is going to be different. What about Kona versus Kona EV, etc.? There are situations where the electric vehicle may be a little bit more expensive at the beginning, but they're going to be an awful lot more similar than some of these people would like to tell you. Let me know what you think about that down there in the comments section below. And of course, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Also, let me know what additional kinds of content you'd like to see on this channel down there in the comments section as well. See all of you later.